regret cuts deep. And sometimes it never really fades away because it shouldn't. For Shoyo Ishida, it was the time he had forcibly taken away from Shoko Nishimiya in elementary school and the mental scarring he'd give her. Ishida was the most popular kid in school, and he saw every day as an opportunity to be bigger and more daring than the last, to be heroically victorious against boredom. But after constantly being enabled by his friends and going unpunished for so long, his daredevil stunts would eventually find itself targeting a person in the form of bullying. Day after day, he would recklessly harass Nishimiya for her deafness, justifying his actions as entertainment and as a means to put her in a place, as he saw Nishimiya as a liability to the class that enabled him. Even the teacher would encourage his behavior to an extent, also looking down on Nishimiya, despite her best efforts to try and understand and help everyone. Ironically, he would be the one to refuse to hear the hurt he was causing. It was only after constantly getting away with physical and verbal harassment, taking eight of Nishimiya's hearing aids, permanently damaging her ear, and so much more, eventually causing her to transfer schools, that he would only begin to realize the price of his actions. Just like Nishimiya's notebook that he had once thrown away into the pond, he would be the one to find himself abandoned as well, experiencing his own discrimination firsthand. First, it was his friends that would turn their backs to him, eventually destroying his reputation even to people he didn't even know. Then, it was the disappointment and humiliation experienced by his mother. And finally, it was his own regret. Regret for traumatizing someone's life so deeply for personal enjoyment. Age isn't a shield for consequences, and he'd reap what he sowed for the next five years of his life. While Ishida initially cursed the world, he'd come to accept his treatment as punishment. Everyone knew who he was, everyone stayed cleared of him, everyone hated him. Hearing all the gossip made towards him, he'd isolate and close himself from the world, not even able to look at people in the face out of guilt, metaphorically shown with him covering his ears and the crossed faces of those around him, giving up on old and new connections. They were just faceless people not worth being hurt by or remembering. He wasn't worth remembering. Unable to see a future worth living after repeatedly experiencing the same lonely, miserable day, he makes up for the money he owed to his mother and plans the suicide. Yet, there was someone that he couldn't turn a blind eye to, someone that he needed to face and couldn't run away from just yet. Whether he had any right to see Nishimiya again was up to her, but he'd at least try to set things right. Keeping her notebook after all these years, learning sign language, and completely changing his demeanor, his efforts of change would come as a surprise to Nishimiya. But to Ishida, it wasn't enough to merely show change. He was simply reopening old wounds without making up for anything, so he wanted to befriend her. And while this was a rather inconsiderate and careless request to make at this point, especially after everything he had done and before properly apologizing, it was a genuine attempt from Ishida to try and give her something back he had taken. And surprisingly, his efforts would reach her, giving him a second chance, finding himself a new reason to keep living, though his plans of suicide wouldn't be let off so easily by his mother. And while the outcome was rather messy, he found a second reason to keep living, not just to look forward to the possibilities of tomorrow, but for a family who still cared about him today. Given another chance at life, his character would be put to the test when he'd witness a student harassed for their bike. And while the person he was yesterday would have nihilistically ignored the situation as a bystander, if he wanted to show change starting today and live a life where tomorrow was worth seeing, he needed to show change in all aspects of his life, not just selectively. Though his solution to the situation would prove to be clumsy, and for that, it burnt him. But to Ishida, that was to be expected. Just another day of his miserable life because to him, that was what he deserved, lacking any self-worth in himself. Yet to say he didn't yearn for something more would be wrong, however. He wanted to see Nishimiya, finding any opportunity and reason to do so. But of course, once again, the world wasn't so forgiving to him. This time running into someone very close to Nishimiya, her sister, and someone who very much knew who Ishida was, giving him the cold shoulder at the idea that he was her friend and shutting him out leaving him contemplating what it meant to have a friend, and whether or not it was worth trying to reconnect with Nishimiya for her sake. But for as cold as the world around him may seem, unexpectedly, the kind deeds he made earlier would find its way back to him in the form of Nagatsuka, the student that was being harassed earlier, riding his stolen bike and returning it. As a defense mechanism, 
Ishida would wince at his name while holding protectively to his burn, signifying his anxiety. But upon realizing that his kindness was reciprocated, for the first time in many years, he feels the familiar yet distant warmth of that of a friend, with the crust gently falling off of Nagatsuke's face. Grateful, Ishida would share his bread, representing the beginning of their friendship, something that was almost completely foreign to him at this point, but was something he desperately needed. From having a friend to ride to school with, to watching the movies together and just having someone to talk to in general, Ishida is in complete awe of his new relationship and begins to break out of his shell. He's awkward, but sincerely enjoys his time with Nagatsuka, and it is through him, he recognizes what it means to be friends, deciding to visit Nishimiya. However, Nishimiya's sister would step in again, calling herself her boyfriend to keep distance between the two, and condemns Ishida for only satisfying himself. But where Ishida would have probably given up, at least for now, his friend decides to lend him a helping hand, indirectly allowing him to see Nishimiya. They talk in sign language, conveying that they desire to be friends moving forward, mutually holding on to both the thought and something tangible, whether it be the bread or notebook for the past two weeks as a reason to see each other. And while Ishida very much wants to forget about the notebook that embodied all his mistakes, Nishimiya didn't for some strange reason, going as far as to jump into the river where she had once given up on it before. Seeing this as a chance to get back at Ishida for what he had done to Nishimiya, Yuzuru posts photos of him jumping into the lake, causing him to get suspended, and Ishida, despite not knowing who would do this to him, quietly accepts his punishment. He does find out from Yuzuru herself after a fight happens between the sisters, yet, instead of being resentful, Ishida was relieved, able to accept his treatment and offer his hand to her, even if it's at his own expense at times, and this agitates Yuzuru, knowing what he had done to her sister. She was watching someone who she resented for almost taking her sister away from her forever, try to live past his guilt and heal the scars he couldn't. Yet, no one knows this better than Ishida, admitting that it was also about himself, though he does hold genuine care for Nishimiya's happiness, being the hope and reason that he was still alive. And it's in this moment of sincerity and vulnerability hidden behind the umbrella that she could see his answer to those who condemned him, enough for her to be willing to see him again and reveal her true identity, not as someone who would stand between the two friends, but beside them. But obviously, this journey towards redemption would take time. In an attempt to restore the life he had robbed from Nishimiya, Ishida reconnected with old friends and made new ones, forming a friend group for her. And for every attempt he made, he saw Nishimiya fit in a little better and smile, finding himself smiling as well, so grateful to be with the people around him. Yet, there was always an unsettling feeling I had at the back of my mind when watching him enjoy himself at the amusement park, because as much as his actions were ultimately positive, driven by his guilt to change, that very guilt held himself back from fully embracing the connections he had, as there was a clear and consistent avoidance of his past that didn't make the experience wholehearted to me. His reaction to his old friend, his discomfort when talking about bullying, his helplessness to defend Nishimiya when his old teacher mocked her, feeling that he did not have the right to criticize him, his white lies to Nishimiya when translating what others say, his lack of spoken apology. Just like the notebook he was so desperate to avoid bringing up, he felt too guilty and scared to properly address his past to those he needed to, so he did everything he could with his actions to make up for it as a new man today. But you are the sum of your past experiences, and while it worked initially, he couldn't hide such a big part of himself from his friends forever. We had once reached Yuzuru who knew of his past and pressured him immediately, he had failed to realize that it was his clarity that let him succeed, fooling himself and falling into the temptation of thinking he could start over with new people. His approach is symbolically contrasted with Sahara in the roller coaster scene. While this moment was more about Sahara's relationship with Uno, I think it's also subtly representative of their relationship with those around them, specifically with Nishimiya where Sahara was able to apologize for her mistakes up front, surpassing her fear and was free, while Ishida wasn't, still scared of honesty and withholding the things he needed to say. And when it came back to bite him, it was completely overblown with miscommunication, tearing everyone apart. And instead of facing it, all he did was run. But the past would always catch up regardless. To Ishida, this was merely further punishment of his past, so if he couldn't have happiness, 
He would give everything he could to Nishimiya, the one person that didn't condemn him and still stayed by his side, continuing to disconnect from everyone else and suffer by himself for her sake. But this was merely an excuse to avoid present problems, because just like his friends, despite spending the most time with Nishimiya, ironically, he would neglect to communicate with her honestly the most, forcing a smile so she could too, failing to see the pain behind hers and understand where he had went wrong until he had almost lost Nishimiya herself. Why did it come to this? Just a second away from the point of no return, Ishida had managed to save her. In this reflective sequence that is given more context in the manga, Ishida finally realizes where he went wrong. If only he had replied to Sahara, answered Uono's calls, kept his phone on him so he could ask Yuzuru what floor her family's apartment was on to make it there sooner, had it avoided communicating to Nishimiya about his problems. If only he had faced everyone like he should have instead of running from the world, refusing to hear the important things happening around him just like when he was a kid, things could have been different. And it's in his realization of his mistakes and the importance of his connections, he promises to change, no longer running away from his problems or those around him, that he could find the strength to save Nishimiya. Perhaps where I find this story at its saddest is with Shoko Nishimiya's character, not from her deafness or the bullying, but from how she views herself because of it. Because while Ishida initially cursed the world for how it treated him, heartbreakingly, despite doing nothing wrong, she never did. In elementary school, she quickly became the target of Ishida's bullying, not just for the fun of it, but because he viewed her as a liability to the class, which is where his actions hurt most. From losing the quiet competition, delaying others in class of their work, and dragging behind socially, she began to see herself as nothing but a liability to the world, and any positive treatment in her life was out of pity or came at the steep price for others. When Nishimiya's notebook was once filled with gratitude for the kindness of those around her, it would quickly be replaced with constant apologies and horrible messages for being who she was. Despite all the cruel things that happened to her, however, she never once stopped smiling, because to her, that was the least she could do, hoping that her efforts would reach somewhere, but it never got better eventually forcing herself to stop interacting with others altogether, thinking everyone would be happier. And even after all she had been through, eventually transferring schools, she never properly communicated with her mother or the school what she was going through and who was bullying her, thinking that all her experiences were deserved. Believing that that was the truth, she completely gave up on herself, representative of what she had left behind. Her notebook, her most powerful connection to the world around her, where dialogue, sign language, touch, and everything she tried had failed her, her notebook didn't, picking it up as many times as she could until someone else had to. And while it is implied in the film, her breaking point is further accentuated in the manga, in which it was explicitly stated that she was suicidal as just a child. So seeing that same notebook return back into her life five years later, especially from Ishida who wanted to be her friend now, wasn't so much an apology to her, but a second chance to be a part of the world she had forced herself to abandon. It was a chance for her to be a part of other people's lives, to be normal. And for the first time in her life, she discovered what it was like to have wonderful, lasting relationships outside of her family. But while this was all happening, Nishimiya's hearing only got worse, until her right ear became completely deaf. In a world that was already so quiet, the thought of losing her hearing altogether was terrifying and reuniting with Uno would only escalate Nishimiya's anxieties of being left out of that bustling world she had just come to love even more. To her, what little left of her hearing she did have, while abnormal, kept her in reach of a normal life. Pressured by her deteriorating hearing, she wanted to make the most out of her second chance while she could, confessing to Ishida like how any normal girl would, changing her hairstyle, buying a gift, and talking. But by not accepting herself and her usual means of expression as worthy, she couldn't reach Ishida, who saw her attempts to be normal as strange. And while it is a rather comedically endearing scene, I'm sure it was very demoralizing for her, because no matter how hard she tried to be normal, in her eyes she couldn't. In an effort to recover from her confession, she joins Ishida's friends at the amusement park, but what was originally meant to be a pleasant time to foster closer relationships with everyone became a harrowingly confronting experience for Nishimiya. 
Although Isha blames nobody but himself, as someone who is always watching him, Uno, in a self-admittedly flawed way, blames Nishimiya. In the same way she hated Nishimiya for her influence in Ishida's life, taking his time away from her, Nishimiya, instead of hating her for how she was treated, hated herself for how Ishida became, which frustrated Uno. While Uno could acknowledge and apologize for her flaws, albeit rather poorly, Nishimiya didn't accept the apology, bearing all the blame of the past because of her self-hatred instead, unable to see the value she had to those around her, to Ishida, something Uno could enviously see so clearly. And that conversation of the past would come back to haunt Nishimiya, in which history was seemingly repeating itself before her eyes where Ishida would lose everything. Through a lack of communication from Ishida, she believed that it was all her fault, seeing the pain behind his gestures and smile. It was all so forced. Alone, how Nishimiya currently was, she could not save Ishida, and was only hurting him, once again seeing herself as a liability that hadn't changed since elementary school. As much as she wanted to be a part of the world she was given a second chance at, she was traumatically reminded why she had left it in the first place. There was a price to her happiness, and her guilt became so much she wasn't willing to pay that price anymore. Leaving behind her hearing aid, she left behind the life she was once so desperately holding onto, embracing the silence she had feared would lose her everything and that she hated herself for. With her gone, no one had to sacrifice anything anymore. But one person, one hand, saved her, showing her that her life was worth more to Ishida than his own, even at her lowest, valuing her for not being someone merely normal, but for being Nishimiya. She was never a liability to him, but his salvation. Realizing what she considered as kindness to those around her was the most hurtful thing she could have done, especially to Ishida, she takes a beating from Uono. All her care for Ishida, hatred and envy for Nishimiya would explode in violence. But when Nishimiya once did nothing but apologize and wallowed in her self-hatred, she realized that doing so would only show that she hadn't changed and would cause more grief. So she picked herself up to make things right doing everything she could in Ishida's absence to mend what was damaged, through connecting with his friends on her own and sharing what had happened, helping everyone understand and forgive Ishida. In the manga, this is further expanded upon with Nishimiya's insistence to reconnect everyone through finishing the film project that Nagatsuka and Ishida were working on throughout the story, even able to reach Uono for help with enough persistence. More than ever, she made her voice heard. With everyone's support and perspective, she truly found her place in the world not just with Ishida, but with everyone, showing herself she could change and achieve something despite her disability. But for as wonderful of a world she had just come to be a part of was, it was missing someone she couldn't bear the thought of living without, the person that had been the reason she was a part of this world in the first place. Connected in thought and by the day of their reunion, the day of bread duty, and the day of their film project meetings, fearing for the worst for each other, they desperately make their way to the bridge, hoping that the other would be there just like any other Tuesday before it ended. And it's there where they were reunited. In a beautiful moment of sincerity and healing, the two clear up their misunderstandings, honestly communicating the things they needed to. Ishida, who promised to change and face his problems, immediately apologizes properly for his bullying in their childhood and his miscommunication with her. He wanted to help and hear her voice, but instead, he helped himself and interpreted things he didn't understand for his convenience, hiding his pain and avoiding context to important situations that may have hurt her, when in reality, she was more than happy to listen. She always was, realizing that it was his neglection and lack of clarity that led her to the balcony. And Nishimiya, left in the dark, believing that she was the one that ruined his friendship again, would realize that her self-hatred led her to misinterpret everything and hurt those that loved her. While it was important that she could accept this apology in their childhood, where she wasn't able to before with Uno, in the present, just as much as Ishida was to blame, she was too, so distraught that she had hurt him and those that loved him. But for as flawed as they were individually, maybe they could grow into something greater together. Where Ishida refused to listen to those around him, Nishimiya refused to listen to herself. Where the two could see so much value in each other, they couldn't see it in themselves. Where both of them had almost given up, they had saved each other. Just like the fireworks that were framed within the lowest moments, life is both short and beautiful, so it's worth seeing it to the end. With tears in his eyes, Ishida tries his best to comfort Nishimiya, 
asking her to help him live for his and her sake, showing her the important place she had in his life. And to that, she happily accepts his feelings, letting go of her self-hatred and forgiving herself. Sticking to her word, Nishimiya gives Ishida a helping hand, going as far as to pull him forward around his own school during a festival. After years of social avoidance that stemmed from his anxieties, more than ever, he couldn't look anywhere but down. Carrying out his promise proved to be difficult, but it wasn't impossible. Seeing the final product of the film project he had gathered everyone together come to fruition, he couldn't help but break out of his shell at how wonderful everything turned out, both in film and friendship. While initially he panics at his own reaction, his friends helped him get back on his feet, showing that they cared and forgave him, slowly breaking the wall that he had put between them. And it's there where he could muster the confidence to face them and apologize, wanting to move forward together, finally wholeheartedly reaching them. And so, they all go check out the festival together. It was the final and most confronting step to make for Ishida. Experiencing the trauma of the world turning its back to him after years for the mistakes he made, he silenced his hearing to that pain, thinking he'd be punished for the rest of his life. But he had to open his ears even if it made him vulnerable, if he wanted to change and listen to those around him. Slowly, he opens his ears. Slowly, he looks up. Slowly, he hears. It is all so sudden, with the cross marks on everyone's faces breathlessly falling off, and hearing the lively sound of voice. Because for the first time, he realizes that the world has already forgiven him, no longer ridiculing his existence, but instead freely minding their own lives, as he sees his family, friends, and of course, Nishimiya, all earnestly enjoying their time with each other. After spending the entire story trying so hard to redeem himself, thinking that it was never enough, he realizes that the last person he needed to prove something to, and the last person that needed to forgive him, was himself. That was when he heard the gentle sound of forgiveness. Because no matter how unforgiving and irreparable today is, so long as one is alive there's always possibilities, and a hope for a better tomorrow. <laughs>